What if you could go from a simple idea to a fully published landing page before you could even finish your coffee? That's the power of AI. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys my process of building amazing landing pages completely using AI. I'll show you how to prompt, refine, and deploy a landing page in just a couple of steps. And the best part is you only really need two tools, a chatbot of your choice, think Gemini or ChatGPT, and Taskade, which is like if Notion and Lovable had a baby. So that's enough rambling, let's get into it. Firstly, it's fundamentally important that you guys understand the difference between a landing page and a website. So what is a landing page? A landing page is a specific standalone page with one type of goal. Its purpose is highly focused on converting one type of user with one type of call to action. Whereas a website is like a hub of information. You can have anything from your contact information up there, case studies, your services, offerings, anything and everything. Now there's a couple different tactical differences between a landing page and a website. For example, a landing page has intentionally minimal or no navigation at all. You might see some type of header where it, it links you to a specific section inside the landing page, but very rarely should it ever take you away from the landing page. Whereas a website has all sorts of navigations and a fully built out menu most of the times. Also, the content is vastly different between the two. Like I mentioned earlier, a landing page is targeting one type of visitor, whereas a website can be more broad, targeting everybody. And then of course, call to action. Like a website will have multiple different call to actions, such as learn more, contact us, view products, you might see three or four or five even uh, call to actions on just the home page. A landing page should only have one. And it should be one type of call to action. Buy now, download now, sign up, schedule a call, etc. But it should only be one type of call to action. So now that we have the fundamental differences between a landing page and a website, let's get into building a landing page. Now the first thing that we need to do is think about what type of user we're going after and what's our call to action. Now the first step in creating a landing page with AI is by doing some research, understanding what is working, what's not working, and how to best position yourself in your specific niche. Now you could go out there and search a bunch of uh, landing pages in your niche, or what I like to do is use a deep research prompt with Google Gemini to give me a structured output that I can use in the next steps. So right here I have a prompt that I'll link down in the description below that you guys can use. And essentially this is just telling it, hey, you're a senior UX strategist, you have all this years of experience, and you have all this information of high converting frameworks. I need you to create a high converting landing page, brief about fill in the blanks, and then it's giving you a structure and important guidelines. So for this example, for this tutorial, I'm gonna be using a fictitious company um, that is offering GovCon consulting services to professional engineers. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this prompt and head over to Gemini. So copy and paste. So now all we gotta do is change the objective to fit your specific niche. Again, for this example, I'm gonna create, uh, create page four, Gov, I'm gonna be a GovCon consulting firm. GovCon consulting firm. This landing page will target professional engineering firms, or engineering service firms, service firms, who are looking to break into federal contracting, who are looking to grow their business with federal, contract, with federal contracting. Don't know where to start. The primary conversion, so make this whatever conversion you're trying to get. In my example, I'm gonna use schedule call is to schedule a call. And then everything else you can leave the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the tool of deep research and then sit back for about three to five minutes while it does its thing. And after a couple of minutes, we have our landing page guide. So we're gonna actually go ahead and export this to use it for a structure as well as our style guide. So let's go ahead and export copy export to docs and we're just going to save this as a pdf and use it in the next two steps so once you have it inside google docs just go ahead and export this as a pdf so once you have your deep research document we're going to go ahead and create a landing page structure using that and i already have a prompt that you guys can use again down in the description below 
but all you have to do is replace these variables inside of here with your actual product or service and to whatever niche that you're selling. What this will do is it will create a landing page structure that follow a general structure that follows this hero, problem, solution, proof, differentiation, FAQs, call to action, and then of course a minimal footer. So let's jump over to Gemini. I already have it queued up here. And then all I need to do is add a canvas so it creates a document. And then we just hit submit. Now all we need to do is again export this to a Google Doc like so, and save this as a PDF. Also, I don't know if you guys have used Gemini and tried to export things as Google Docs. Oftentimes I'll find that it just stays on this about blank page forever. Typically when it's transferring, transferring large chunks of text, um, simple workaround is just to copy all its contents like this and then go into a new file and paste it. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's my internet, maybe it's something else, but uh, very rarely does that actually work. So now we have a content strategy and blueprint. Again, let's save this as a PDF, like so. And lastly, we're gonna jump into the style guide. So. Again, we have another prompt here that we're gonna to give to Gemini and attach our research document. So new chat, paste that in there. Go ahead and change out the brand name and add our document. as well as give it access to the canvas and then go ahead and submit this. And now we're gonna do the same process is export it to a Google Docs or just copy the contents and create a new style guide. Okay, now let's go ahead and export this PDF. Now that we have our blueprint and our style guide, we're ready to start building out our landing page using Taskade. One more step that we gotta do before we can jump over to Taskade, and that's to go into our landing page structure chat and tell it to give us an AI prompt to start with. So I've gone ahead and done that. I just said create a simple landing page AI prompt for an AI code builder, and it created something like this using that same structure that we had. And then I'm just going to simply copy and paste that inside Taskade and hit that go button. This will start creating the environment, installing the dependencies and doing all of the magic be behind the scenes. It typically takes about five minutes or so before you see an initial preview. On the side, you'll see it's starting to create the uh, app and you can see it's pulling all the information, writing the files, you can click into these files and see what it's currently doing. After a couple of minutes, it's gone ahead and created an initial landing page for us. And we can see it's it's something. It's uh, certainly not the best, it's certainly not the worst. But let's go ahead and start on phase two of refining and improving this. So the first step that we're going to do is go into our dashboard up here and go into our media. All we're going to do is upload these visual style guide and the structure of the landing page as well as the basic blueprint into our media and then copy link and say um, update page to fit this style guide and you can also just upload the file here if you'd rather like so or you can just copy and paste the link like that and then we're going to click into the preview so it has the app as its context information and then we can just send that so it's going to start updating the file to make it match and hopefully look a little bit prettier, but again, we'll need some refining regardless. 
So it's gone ahead and updated the style guide to match the colors, um, the blue, navy, and green. But again, not in love with it. So this is where you kind of have to take control into your own hands and do a little bit of prompting and refining. Now, when I do this process, I often like to just create a new chat for each iteration that I'm going to be doing because otherwise you may run into some context length issues, meaning you're passing in way too much information that the large, langu large language model in the back can't process it accurately or process all of it. So all you do is come up to this new chat and tell it what you'd like. So for example, I want my hero section to extend 95% view height. And that that's all I'm going to say. Make hero section extend 95% view height. And I just simply send that. There we go. We can see just like that, it's gone ahead and made the view height 95%. So you can do these little modifications anytime you want to kind of get it to fit your exact vision in your head. A few pro tips that I will share is if you are going to be adding any custom images that you want or videos, add those to the media like so. For example, let's say I wanted this image as in my hero section, I would just add it to my media like so, and then I would click on it and copy link and then say, can you add this image to the hero section? Uh, yeah, sorry, I forgot to submit it. That's okay, I'll just do that. And now I can go ahead and add that. So I'm gonna click on to the preview so it has information of the app. So you can see that it has made that image our background. And let's say you don't absolutely love this or it made some mistake that you don't like and you would rather go back to your previous version. Again, you can try to tell the AI, hey, redo those last changes, or you can cl click on this button, restore version, click on the version that you would like to restore and click on restore. And just like so, we are back to that initial version. Now I won't go ahead and show you all of the refinements that you could do and you can spend however much time or however little time, right? Uh, the landing pages don't need to be the most spectacular thing. Again, they're meant to convert. So someone that's clicking on this already has a high inclination to convert because you're typically running this with some type of paid ads. But let's say you get to a point that you are happy with it and you're ready to publish this and make it public. All you need to do is come up to this publish button and hit publish. And there we go. Our app is live on the internet. We can view this from anywhere and see that this is our landing page. But if you want to change the domain to match something that you like more specifically, what we'll need to do is click on the publish button again and now you have a bunch of more options and click on manage domains. Simply put in your custom domain, add the domain, and very often I see this error where it doesn't show the second text value. Close out of that, open it back up, click on manage domains, and you'll get the second record. So all you need to do is add these into your DNS records, wait 10 minutes or so, and then it will be on whatever domain you set it here. I want to show you how to do that with GoDaddy. So I'm going to head over to GoDaddy. Inside my domain and DNS records, I'm going to go ahead and add those two, or add those three records. So add a record, choose the type. First it's going to be CNAME. Call this whatever it is. You can use an at if you're just using like the, for example, build example. Um, I'm putting this on a subdomain Gavinity, and then I'm using, um, yeah, so it would be Gavinity.BuildExample.com like I have here. Uh, but if you just want this on whatever domain it is, 
you can do it like such. So add that to right there, add more records, and we're just gonna copy and paste all of these. Control C, losing my place here. Add the text record, Control V, and back and forth. More records, text, Control C, add the text and value, Control C and Control V. All right, save all records. Just hit yes and then save. And now all I gotta do is wait a couple minutes for this to propagate. So it's pending and it will be ready in a minute or two. Okay, for some reason I was having some issues with the custom domain, but I did the same process, just uh, changed it to test instead. And it says it is active. So now if I go to this example, control C, we can see that it's working. So there you go, guys. You have success successfully launched your landing page on your own custom domain. Now, if you guys like this video but want to build out your complete website, then I recommend checking out this video where I show you how to build a free website using Firebase. And that brings us to the end of the video, so I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, y'all.